Welcome to the CMCMN, that is the Church Ministers, Children and Ministers Networking Telecast that is brought to you every Saturday. And um, we invite the church ministers, children, and they share with us on what God is doing in their ministries and also what he's doing in their lives. It has been my joy to welcome them and even to see what God is doing as they, he prepares them for his coming because the mighty and outbreak of revival that is there today. It is because he wants to use them powerfully. And I'm also calling all the CMCs, wherever you are, you got to know that the Lord wants to use you. He wants to use you powerfully in these last days. And your name is also going to be in the book of life because you need to be there available to be in the book of life, preparing your heart and also preparing you for great revival and ministry. Uh, well, this is Bishop Dr. Grace Kariuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries. Uh, mother to the amazing champions and mother to the CMCs around the globe. Uh, it, it is my joy also to know that uh, the Lord is asking me also all the time to get deeper and deeper in him. And especially in the area of inviting the CMCs into his work and even to know him and to walk in his ways. Now, um, if you'd want to partner with us and we invite you to partner, I know you'd like to, uh, you can partner with us through our website at www.agrism.org. Also follow us on Facebook and YouTube. At uh, Facebook is Zakariuki Bishop Dr. Grace and uh, Facebook is uh, actually uh, in, on, in this in this one, our Facebook is a CMCMN, that is the Church Minister's Children, at, um, that is our telecast, which is, uh, we, all, we have a Facebook uh, page. You're welcome to get into that Facebook Facebook page. And also, uh, you can also find us on our Facebook, which is uh, Karyuki, I mean, Bishop Dr. Grace Karyuki. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we are grateful for giving us yet another wonderful moment to be with the CMCs and also the ministers to hear what God you have in store for us. We pray that even as the word comes forth, that it is going to reach many. Many are going to give their lives to Jesus. Many are going to be delivered, set free, and even desire to serve you and to walk in your ways. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you're doing a wonderful great work in us for we are praying this in jesus name amen now invite you all the cmcs and also the ministers when i talk about the ministers I'm talking about the worshipers I'm talking about the pastors evangelists the apostles and the prophets the teachers of the word and all that are involved in the ministry all the deacons and deaconesses, leaders, elders, you are involved in ministry, you are ministers. And that is who you are and I invite you to join us so that you can experience the great things that God wants to do in these last days, especially in the lives of the ministers and their families. Well, our topic for today is about called for purpose. You're not called just to be called. You're called for purpose. And you need to know what your calling is. You need to know why God has called you. And we are going to hear that. Our speaker for today, who is one of my daughters, she's going to expound deeply on the calling. And uh, she's going to share with us on the calling of one, one of the prophets. And we are going to see and experience, hear what many that have been called and many that have been called, what they need to do. Let's first look at uh, Isaiah chapter 49 verses uh, 1 to 9 and I might only just may, maybe have a view, a few of those verses and uh, the Bible says, listen to me, O islands and coastlands uh, and pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he had he has named me. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has kept me hidden. And he has made me a sharpened arrow. In his quiver, he has hidden me. And the Lord said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will show my glory. 
one of the th things the Lord is calling you for is to show his glory. He wants us to show his glory. That is one of the purposes for the call. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. However, my justice is with the Lord and my reward is my God. And now says the Lord who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. One of the things is to bring Jacob back to the Lord, to bring the lost to the Lord, to bring the unbelievers to the Lord. That is what God is calling us to do. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God is my strength. He says, it is too trivial a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. So you, our work is to bring the, the tri to have the tribes of Israel raised and even restored. All those that are lost, that even have left the way, all the CMCs that have lost the way, all the CMCs that have given up in life, we bring them back and they be restored. That is what the Lord has sent us to do in this hour. And uh, as we continue to see the many things he's called us to do, there's one special thing that is arising. We see that uh, there's one thing that God is calling us to do and mainly is to bring people to him. And those ones who have left the way, they have been called, to, we are called to bring a restoration to them. Okay, and they, we are, when they are being restored, that is restore the survivors of Israel, I'll also make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Not only where you are, but the salvation is going to reach the ends of the earth. Reaching as many people as we can reach, that is what God is telling us. Make sure you start with Jerusalem where you are and move on to the others, people you are working with. They are the, the, everyone that is involved that comes across your path, they are supposed to be told about the Lord. You are supposed to live a life that will make sure that uh, it portrays Christ in every place you go, that people will be drawn to the salvation, that people will desire to know the kind of life that you are living, why you are that way, why you are doing things the way you are doing them, why you are different from the others. Because we are going to be different because Christ is our Lord and when he's our Lord, we'll not be doing things like the world. We'll be doing things differently and therefore people will long and desire to be like us. Then uh, um, this is what the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, is holy, uh, Israel, Holy uh, Israel's Holy One says to the, the to the thoroughly despised one, to the one hated by the nation, to the servant of the of rulers, kings will see and arise, princes shall also bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. You see, there are people who have been despised. We are going to reach them and they are going to be raised. And as people are raised, people who are raised from nowhere, people that were never expected to be anything, this is going to glorify the Lord. And even kings will bow before the Lord because of seeing how God is raising even those ones who are unwanted people who have been despised. And not just despised, they are thoroughly despised as the Bible says. And then um, this is what the Lord says, in a favorable time I've answered you and in a day of salvation I've helped you and I will keep watch over you and give you for a covenant of the people to restore the land from its present state of ruin and to apportion and give as an inheritance the deserted hereditary lands. So you are very, very important in God's eye, you that has been called. You are very important even in his hands because you've been called to be into a state where you are going to have the people to become people of covenant. Because when you are born again, you become a daughter and a son of a covenant. There is a covenant that is made between you and God because of our Lord Jesus Christ who has given his life a ransom for your sins. 
and then we are restored from the uh, from the present state the present state of sin the present state of ungodliness the present state of unholiness that one we are taken out of that state to the state where God wants us to be restored to become what he wants us to be where we can inherit that which belongs to him that which he has given to us not only spiritual but even material we are going to experience it because the Lord is talking about uh, hereditary land and uh, when he's talking about that he's talking even about material so get ready to receive that which God has given or has kept in store for us and then saying to those who are bound and captured go forth and to those who are in spiritual darkness show yourselves come into the light of the savior they will feed along the roads on which they travel uh, on which they travel and their pastures will be on all the bare heights so that is what we've been told sent to do to bring light to those ones who do not who are living in spiritual darkness and even to show forth those ones who are bound they, they need to be set free so that they can honor the lord the king of kings that is the purpose one of the purpose of your calling you've been called to bring forth salvation to people to set to set the captives free and even to allow those ones who have lost their inheritance in the Lord to have it back, get restored, and so that they can be people that will glorify the Lord. Now it is my joy to welcome our speaker for today, and this is one of my daughters, Virginia. We thank God that she is in her last year in high school. Oh, um, in 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 Kenya, it is that uh, it is actually uh, form four. And here in the U.S., it's her 12th grade. So she's graduating in her high school this year. So we thank God for, for she is um, the class, our class for 2024. And we know that God is going to give her to, to, to give her a wonderful time uh, that at the end of the year we'll be rejoicing together because of God using her powerfully even uh, and even giving her the wisdom and even encouraging her as she continues with her studies. We thank God for you, Virginia. Welcome and share about this calling and God is going to bless you. Welcome, Virginia. Praise God. Praise God again. My name is Virginia Kasiala. I minister with the Bodan Glory International Ministry. Mm, first, I'd like to thank Bishop Chris for giving me this opportunity to bring for you the word of God. And before I start, let us pray. Our Almighty God, we come before you this day saying thank you for the gift of life, of life that you have given unto us. Oh, Father, even as I bring your word to your people, Lord, may you enable me to minister unto them properly as the way you want. Father, for this no other God like you. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen. So, praise God once more. So today, what I'll be preaching about is about Jeremiah. So, all of us know that Jeremiah was one of the prophets of God. And so today, I'm going to talk about Jeremiah. And first of all, I'll, I'll talk about his call. And this will look from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, from verse 4. And the word of God says, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. So, uh, from the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4, it's talking about the call of Jeremiah. We see how God appeared to Jeremiah and told him that before he formed him, he knew him and he had appointed him as a prophet to preach to preach his word. But Jeremiah tells God that 
he's not able to do his work because he doesn't know how to speak. But the Lord reached out his hand and touched Jeremiah's mouth and gave him words to speak. So from this verse, we see that God is going to do anything to appoint his servant. To God is going to do anything as long as he wants you to serve him. Even if there's, you don't have any experience in in proclaiming the word of God, God is going to enable you, he's going to help you. So you should not be afraid of what is going to happen because you have no experience. You should just trust in God and everything is going to be okay. And also from verse 10, we see the visions of Jeremiah. So God asked Jeremiah what he was seeing. And Jeremiah told, the first vision was that Jeremiah said he had seen the branch of an almond tree. And the Lord told him that you have seen correctly for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. And the second vision, we see that Jeremiah saw a pot that was boiling and it was boiling towards them from the north. So from the second vision, we see that uh, it meant that the the nation of Israel is going to be attacked by by people from the north. And from there, the Lord is telling Jeremiah that, Jeremiah said that the Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the people from, of the northern kingdom, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods and in worshipping what their hands have made. So God told Jeremiah that the enemies from the north they are going to attack Israel because the Israelites were disobedient to God. They were sinning against God and they were not fulfilling what the Lord wanted them to do. They also went ahead and they were not and they were burning incense to other gods they weren't worshiping the one and only god so that's why god told jeremiah that the the nation is going to be attacked so from here we see that god is going to punish anyone who sins against him so in order to avoid god's judgment we should always do what the lord wants you to do we should only worship him and from this word, I'll, I will, I'm going to speak about reasons why Jeremiah was not willing to accept the call of God. First of all, we see that he felt that he was too young. So if God has appointed you to do his work, we should not give excuses because the Lord knows that that is the perfect work for you to do. That's why he has appointed you. The next one, we see that he lacked confidence. So... In whatever you do, you should always have confidence and courage and trust in God that everything is going to go well. And also, he did want to accept the call of God because he was not sure of what could be done to him by the people. So if God has appointed you, you should not worry. You should not ask. You know, there are many people out there, the prophets of God, who they give out the word, they preach the word that the, the Lord has blessed them with, but the people react differently until they start mocking them. But the Bible is telling us that we should not care about how people will react to the word that you preach to them. Maybe there are some who didn't like the word, but as long as it is the word that God has put inside you, you should just give them to, you should just speak it out. And also, I'll talk about challenges that Jeremiah faced in preaching the word of God. So he was rejected by his own relatives. People made false accusations against him. He was threatened with death because of speaking of God. And he was publicly mocked. He was physic physically assaulted like he was put in a dry well for him to die over there. So in preaching, the God, in preaching God's word, we see that people will go through a lot of challenges. Many Your relatives will go ahead and reject you. And also, people will threaten you, they will accuse you falsely. But even, it doesn't matter the situation that you face, all the difficult situations that you go through. Because 
But the Bible tells us that those who suffer because of proclaiming the word of God, they shall see the kingdom of heaven. So in proclaiming the we shall as Christians we should we shall know that in proclaiming the word of God we should not expect everybody to love what you're going to say because obviously there are those people who will be against you. Thank you, Virginia, for that wonderful word. You've done it in a great way. I know that uh, as we continue to pray for you in your studies so that you can excel, we know that God is going to continue using you powerfully even on this platform to encourage and even to do the mighty things that God has called you to do on uh, in the ministry. And now in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses, uh, I mean ch chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 from the Amplified Bible says, For he says, At the acceptable time, the time of grace, I listened to you and I helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the day, uh, is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So, because it's the acceptable time, we need now also to make sure we rise up and let people know that it is the appointed time, it is the acceptable time for salvation. Because that is the reason why God has called us. He has called us to give our lives to Christ. And therefore, we need to tell those ones who have not given their lives to Jesus or those ones who have gone back into the world, and especially the church minister's children, and as the CM says, it is time to come back. Because because it is the acceptable time. It is the time of grace. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For you are holy people set apart to the Lord uh, to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all people on the face of the earth to be a people for his pos own possession. That is his very special treasure, the purpose as to which you are called, it is to know that you are owned by God. You are God's own possession. You belong to God. That is the purpose. You belong to God. So you are being placed where you belong. Then you belong to God. You are his very special treasure. And you see the treasures are not kept Anyhowly, they are kept in a special place because you are a special possession unto our Lord. You are a special treasure. So that is why it is our season. We are on time. The time of grace is now to make sure that every CMC is seated in the right position because you are God's possession. For God to use you for his glory and for God to continue gifting because he has gifts that he wants to give to us. Ours is just to wait and experience the great things that God wants to give unto us because we are his special treasure and his, we are his special treasure to give to the world that which they are missing and lacking because they lack a lot and because of us being placed as a gift to the world then the world is going to experience that which God is sending us to display and even to portray to the nations. In Deuteronomy 26, verses 18 to 19, Today the Lord has declared that you are his people, his treasured possession, just as he promised you and that you are to keep all his commandments and that he will set you high above all the nations which he has made for praise, fame, and honor, and that you shall be a holy people set apart and consecrated to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. You hear, you have been set apart as he has promised, and your work is to keep all his commandments. The purpose for your calling is to cause you, as you have been called, as you have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are capable of keeping his commandment, not by your own strength, but because of his grace. And because of his masses, you are able to keep his commandments and you are able to display to the people that it is possible to keep his commandments. It's possible to live a holy life. It is possible to live a life that pleases God. And then you know what? He has called us and set us above set us on high above all the nations which he has made. And you know for what? For praise for fame, 
for honor. That is what God has called us to be. He has called us for praise, for fame, and for honor. Because the things that will be happening in our lives, people will continue to praise our God. Our God will be known in the midst of the people. Our God will be received and honored. Many will bow before him and exalt him and desire to serve him all the days of their lives. We are a holy people. We are consecrated and set apart. We are called for our purpose. We are called to portray, portray the things that God has put in us. People will receive and walk in God's way to please him and even to glorify his name. May the Lord bless you as you purpose to walk in his ways and as you purpose to allow him to continue using you and continue multiplying you and especially you servants of God, you CMCs. May the Lord continue to use you as you continue to glorify his name. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries. This is Mother to the CMCs and mother to the amazing champions. I welcome you also to partner with us in our website at www.agracem.org. Please continue logging in into our CMCMN that is Church Ministers Children and Ministers Network. That is on our Facebook page and also on YouTube at Karaoke, at Bishop Dr. Grace Karaoke. God bless you for now. I look forward to hear your comments and even to see you sharing to as many people as you can to hear this message. Be blessed for now. Thank you, Virginia, again for being a blessing. Shalom, shalom, shalom.